Hello, hello. I'm Lydia and I'm trying to read the whole Bible, chapter by chapter, day by day, until I get to the end of it. But I started towards the end anyway. Doesn't matter. I'm going to circle around. We're going to do the whole thing. It's going to take like three years. C'est la vie. Right now, it's almost half past midnight. I have about eight more videos to go because I'm going on holiday and I, you know, there will be no time. I, I don't even sleep normally at home, which is why we're doing this past midnight. One day, my schedule will be back on track. God willing, that'll be when I go back to uni in about three weeks. We'll see. Anyway, focusing back on the on the subject matter, we are going to be reading Second Peter chapter one today together. NIV. Let's go. Second Peter chapter one. Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who through the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ have received a faith as precious as ours, grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, confirming one's calling and election. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these, he has given us his very great and precious promises, so that through them you may participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption of the world caused by evil desires. For this reason, for this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, mutual affection, and to mutual affection, love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But whoever does not have them is nearsighted and blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their past sins. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, make every effort to confirm your calling and election. For if you do these things, you will never stumble, and you will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Prophecy of Scripture So, I will always remind you of these things, even though you know them and are firmly established in the truth you now have. I think it is right to refresh your memory, as long as I live in the tent of this body, because I know that I will soon put it aside, as our Lord Jesus Christ has made clear to me, and I will make every effort to see that after my departure you will always be able to remember these things. For we did not follow cleverly devised stories when we told you about the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ in power, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. He received honour and glory from God the Father when the voice came to him, from the majestic glory, saying, This is my son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice that came from heaven when we were with him on the sacred mountain. We also have the prophetic message as something completely reliable, and you will do well to pay attention to it, as to a light shining in a dark place, until the dawn and the morning star rises in your hearts. Above all, you must understand that no prophecy of scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation of things. For prophecy never had its origin in the human will, but prophets, though human, spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. Okay, thank you for listening. Thank you for being here. Thank you for joining my little community of Christians, reading the Bible together from this random spot. And I look forward to speaking to you guys again tomorrow and reading the Bible again tomorrow. So God bless. Have a great day. Have a great night. Have a great anything. Bye. Go with grace.